nine. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four. We remember the science and engineering that first put a man on the moon. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. But there was also another story. I believe the marketing aspect of Apollo was as important as the spacecraft. I absolutely do. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. The ability for us to communicate how important this is and how amazing it is and how freaking cool it is was absolutely essential for us to have been able to do that program. The idea that we want to go to the moon is so audacious. It's also so expensive <laughs> to be able to do that. And we had to get the public behind it. NASA did have one thing in its corner, fear. In the decade before, Americans had watched with horror as the Soviets stormed into space. Today, a new moon is in the sky, a 23-inch metal sphere placed in orbit by a Russian rocket. Rocketing not just the first satellite or the first canine cosmonauts. Surviving the shock of takeoff acceleration, both animals, free from gravity's pull, adjust themselves to the frightening feeling of floating weightless in space. The Soviet communists also sent the first humans safely into orbit. It was the propaganda coup of the year. I think when Sputnik went up, it was a rude awakening when it wasn't us who got there first. They were first to launch a woman into space. They were first to do a spacewalk. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, these guys are beating us every single time. And there was essentially panic across the world, certainly across the United States. Because of this, the U.S. government wasn't about to lose the race to the moon. But public support wasn't a guarantee, so NASA set out to market the space race. In the beginning, NASA public relations people actually came from the military and they were incredibly secretive. And they said, we're not going to tell you newspaper reporters and television reporters, we're not going to tell you anything. But very quickly, um, people like Julian Shear and others at NASA realized that that wasn't the best approach. The United States launches its two-man Project Gemini program at Cape Kennedy. And once again, the event is reported fully, openly, from pre-launch to recovery. So one of the things that NASA did was they, in many ways, pioneered this concept of, uh, of content marketing, of creating the kind of content that both journalists and the public would be interested in. The photographs that were taken uh, by NASA, whether they were on the ground or by the astronauts in the spacecraft, were all uh, freely available to the public. They insisted on television cameras in the Apollo spacecraft. Hello there, from the men in the moon. <laughs> Creating the kind of content that both journalists and the public would be interested in that would help to grow interest in the space program. That was a radical thing um, for part of the government to do. This is Apollo, the first of a family of spacecraft designed to transport Americans to the moon. Here at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, we are static testing the fourth of the booster stages of the Saturn 1B. There was a th almost 300 page press kit for Apollo 11, this massive document allowed different types of media to figure out an angle that, that they wanted to talk about. Did they want to focus on the spacecraft? Did they want to focus on the biography of the astronauts? Did they want to focus on something mundane as like, how do they go to the bathroom? How do they eat? Here the astronaut is opening a packet of bite-sized items. These may be either freeze-dried or compressed foods. Contrast that with the Russian program, which was incredibly secretive. Uh, and often, you wouldn't know what was going on with the Russian program until the spacecraft had actually landed. NASA also encouraged consumer companies to amplify the excitement. New post-count-off. 
post count off is made with nutritious oats. You can count on it. Fisher pens or Omega watches. Tang is probably one of the most famous examples of a product that was used by the astronauts. Have a blast. Have some Tang. It got people to be very supportive of the space program. We wouldn't have just been able to say, okay, we want to spend billions of dollars. We want to spend 4% you know, of our national budget to go to the moon for the next 10 years. This is launch control. We have but holding the public's interest after Apollo 11 was difficult. There's so much invested in it, in terms of it being a Cold War victory. Many Americans see it as an end point rather than a beginning. NASA did a fabulous job of pointing people towards this audacious goal. But once that goal was achieved, it was less popular a program to just do it again. Apollo was of a certain moment, a Cold War moment. We don't have that impetus again. And it's possible it's because we haven't had a Sputnik moment. A Sputnik moment meaning a, ma a moment of national panic where we say we have to come together and we have to beat this or that competitor or enemy. We just don't have that kick in the butt that they had in the 1960s to do it again.